Alright, for this project, you're going to take a, a photo, you're going to posterize it, and then you're going to trace it nine times in Illustrator using seven different techniques that you've learned up until this point. Um, we're going to reference Andy Warhol here because he was kind of about, you know, reproducing images over and over again with variations, kind of like a factory. And um, the, the main reason for this assignment is so that you can review and I can assess your abilities with Illustrator before we move on to the last thing we're going to learn about Illustrator. Um, uh, this may seem kind of tedious, but again, it's an assessment. It's a way for me to test your skills. Uh, so kind of bear with me and try to do your best on it. Uh, Andy Warhol, of course, uh, famous pop artist, very famous for his screen prints. They were very graphic and uh, brightly colored. Um, obviously, I'm going to require that you color these, um, and I'm going to kind of teach you how to use a tool that you may or may not have used up until this point if uh, you've been watching the videos. And um, yeah, he's famous for kind of, among other things, the idea that uh, repetition is evocative of uh, kind of our culture and consumerism. So, you know. It's not that we consume Elvis Presley, it's that we see him over and over and over again. So his archetype and his, the idea of the ideal man kind of gets, you know, beaten into us. Of his famous um, pictures, this one is perhaps one of his most famous. Uh, this is the car crash. Um, if you've ever seen a, a story in the news of some tragic incident, it, you know, you, you, you're you probably desensitized to it, and this is kind of a comment on that. We, we see tragedy over and over and over again, printed in, you know, the media and everywhere around us, and uh, at a certain point we just sort of become blank to it. Uh, so that's kind of what this evoked. Uh, so even though it looks very weird, you know, it has a lot of, like, very deep connotations and meanings. Kind of the genius behind Andy was images like this, the idea that, you know, through repeating it, we sort of become desensitized or, you know, we sort of become, like, uh, blank to it. And there's a ton of other images and uh, associations with this particular series um, that I'm not going to get into, but, yeah, some, some really cool work. Uh, your project will probably wind up looking kind of like this. Um, the only reason for that is because I think nine is a nice round uh, number. And it will give you plenty of chances to practice your techniques over and over again. Um, you're going to do nine drawings, nine tracings, I call them. And you're going to use seven different techniques. You're going to use the pencil tool, the line tool, pen tool with straight lines, uh, pen with curvy. Then you're going to use the pen tool using all of the different kind of lines you can make. You're going to use just shapes. And you're going to use shapes with Pathfinder. And then, for the last two, you're going to be able to combine uh, a bunch of different... Um, uh, styles into one and uh, you can copy and paste for those or you know redraw them in different ways depending on your personal preference so um, in addition to this demonstration video there's also a tutorial I've made that you can read if you want uh, I'm just gonna walk you through some of the basics here I'm gonna walk you through also how to uh, posterize your image to trace um, so stick with me For this first demonstration, I'm going to show you how to posterize a photograph or photo file. Um, if you don't already have a photo file picked out, I already have my folder set up and a photo file picked out. But if you don't have one picked out, I'm just going to give you a couple tips as to what you should do if you want to find a good photo to work with. Um, I'm going to use Google to search uh, Google Images here. And uh, I'm just going to search one of my favorite artists. Okay. Sometimes when it comes to certain people, you may have to clarify that you want a photograph of them, even though you're doing an image search. And once you click the image search, and you're at the image search, there's a couple other things you can do. Um, under this little bar here, search tools, if you click that, you're going to get a bunch of options. Uh, one of the best options you can use is usage rights. Um, so 
basically you want to make sure that you're using something that you know you have permission to use. So if you check mark the labeled for reuse uh, button, you may have less options, but at least then you know you're using photos that you can reuse or artistically modify without any uh, penalty. Um, for educational purposes, you don't necessarily need to worry about that too much, but if you are going to sell your um, artwork at any point in time and it references something that somebody else made or directly profits from something somebody else made, then you are breaking uh, copyright law, so please don't do that. But uh, another thing under these search tools that you can use that's really valuable is the size command here. This, this sort of sorts images by, by how large they are. You can sort it by actual pixel dimension or you know set the exact one, but I usually just use the large option. And this just ensures that only large images uh, pop up. Now I'm not seeing any photographs of her, which is fine, so I'm going to go back to any size here. And then if I find a photo that I want to work with, usually I want to work with something that has a high resolution, so a very high pixel count. Pixel counts for individual images are usually number in the hundreds, and they're, when you hover your mouse over the image, they're in the lower left-hand bar down here. You want to find something with at least a thousand pixels in one direction. I'm probably not going to find something like that, so the highest I can get is 650 by 500 here. And then, you know, if you don't find anything larger, what you can do is you can search by image. And that will give you a bunch of other, you know, similar looking images. And sometimes if you check the, or click on this all sizes hyperlink, you'll be brought to uh, all the different size versions of that image. And here I can see there's a larger version. So I'll probably want to use this version. Okay. Once you actually find the largest version of your photo and you're ready to start working with it or download it, uh, you, you, you don't want to download the thumbnail. So don't right click on your thumbnail and save image or don't right click on this thumbnail and click save image. You want to isolate the actual image file. So you've got to click on the view image button. And that will bring you to the image file at full resolution in another uh, browser window and, uh, or another tab in this case. Um, this is what you want to save, so make sure you do this every time you save an image from the internet so that it's full resolution. Uh, right click on that image and then the first option should be save image as. Uh, give it a name and a number if you're saving multiples of the same person or thing. Okay, and then click save. And it should download to wherever you saved it. Most often if you don't designate a place it'll be uh, it'll save to um, your downloads folder. Your downloads folder would be under your favorites and uh, it's a kind of a temporary thing to the, the computer you're logged on to so you know if you don't come back to the same computer don't save your images here because they might not be there or you know you might not be at the right computer so don't save anything into this folder. Uh, save it into a separate folder and make sure you put that folder on your H drive. And I'm not connected to the school's network, so I can't access my H drive. But if you want to be able to access that image from another computer via your school login, yeah, make sure you create your folder in your H drive and save everything there. So let's uh, posterize our photo. Um, I'm actually going to use my headshot for this example, but I could use this if I wanted. Um, open up Photoshop. To do that, again, you're going to hit the Start button, go to All Programs, okay and then go to Adobe Design Standard. Um, I'm using CS5, you'll be using CS6. If you open up that folder, Photoshop's at the bottom. It's uh, blue, and PS is the uh, abbreviation for Photoshop. So mine's already open, so it's just gonna pop right up. And once Photoshop's open, you're gonna go File, Open. And you're gonna find that photo. Okay, and open that file. Once you open your photo file, you have a couple of options available to you right at the start before you start posterizing. Uh, sometimes my photo has a lot of extra information in it, so I might crop it. The crop tool, the two black L-shaped, interlocking L-shaped uh, symbols, um, it should be in your toolbox about four steps down. Uh, to use it, just click and drag. Okay. Once you've got your basic um, 
the shape down, uh, you, you can double click on it to confirm it. Uh, if you want, before you click and drag, you can set the width and the height. Um, if you want it to have certain proportions, like if we want it to be a square, we can set the width to 1 and the height to 1. Okay, And we can click and drag and notice our ratio is set to a square ratio here. Okay, So if I double click this, I'll confirm the crop. Uh, you probably noticed there was a check mark up there. I could hit that too or hit enter on my keyboard. Um, and now I've got my image cropped. So let's posterize it. Okay, one thing you can do before you posterize though, um, and I highly recommend you do this, is create some uh, adjustment layers to help control your values. Uh, to do that, go to your le layers panel. Uh, if your layers panel is not open, go to window, layers, okay? And in your layers panel, in the bottom middle, there is a circle that's half black and half white. Click on that to create a new adjustment layer. And you're gonna create a black and white layer. And what this will allow you to do is make your image black and white, of course, but also change how dark or light certain colors are. So I can make my reds darker and my blues and, you know, magentas darker or lighter, depending on my preferences here. Okay. And at any point in time, if I go back to my layers panel here, I can double click on that adjustment layer and adjust those values anytime I want. Um, so that's really handy. I can also create a new adjustment layer and create an, a levels adjustment layer. And levels is going to give me a histogram layout of all of the dark gray and white values in my photo. So I can adjust these values to make, you know, a higher sense of contrast or make true black uh, the dark gray that is my hair. It doesn't matter. Okay. After you make these adjustment levels, uh, your layers, sorry, uh, you'll want to make an adjustment layer, that's your posterize adjustment layer. To posterize your image, uh, you can create a new adjustment layer. Again, that's the little half black, half white circle at the bottom of your layer panel. And uh, posterize should be one of the options there. And you'll notice that when you posterize an image, what it does is it flattens all the values in that image to uh, separate levels of whole color. So right now we have four levels. If I turn that up, by putting my cursor in there and hitting the up arrow key. I can do that by individual numbers. I can use the slider to go up and down. I can click and drag this slider left or right. Okay. And uh, what I recommend you do is keep your levels between uh, about 10 and uh, 5. Okay. Uh, if you go any higher than 10, it starts to look too realistic. It looks basically like your photo. And no matter what project you're doing, it's not helping you uh, separate values when it's 10 values or higher really. So keep it between 10 and 5. Okay, I'm going to keep mine at 6. And then, um, you know, if you're not happy with how the uh, posterize filter is working, you can go back to your other adjustment layers, like your levels and your, you know, black and white layer to sort of adjust what shapes are made with the posterize command by adjusting those sliders. So if I go back to my black and white here, you know, notice making the red lighter or darker really affects the appearance of the levels in my face. All right. And uh, once you're happy with these three adjustment layers, you can um, save your picture. Um, I am going to save mine first as a Photoshop file. Again, when you're done, you can save your uh, photo as a Photoshop file. So go File, uh, Save As. Okay, and the first option for format is usually a Photoshop file. Uh, I would try to name it something different. Um, you know, like mine's name headshot and then the year and then uh, posterize so that I know it's a posterized file and then click save. It should be saved in your folder where you keep all your other project files for this particular project. Click OK. Alright, and then you can save it as a JPEG so you can use it in other programs or upload it or print it easily from other computers. Um, these are the, the computers in the Art Computer Lab are the only computers that have um, Photoshop, so you're going to have to save it as a JPEG if you want to print it from someplace else or do anything else with it really. Um, so from the Format drop down menu, you're going to want to pick JPEG, okay, and probably give it a, the, a different name. So mine's already named Posterize, which is good. And then uh, click Save. 
to uh, your project folder or your H drive, wherever you're storing it. And then when this pops up, click OK. You want to keep the quality pretty high. Okay. So now I've got this um, saved. I can I can print it if I want. If you want to print it um, for other projects, uh, just go File, Print. Um, in CS6, your print dialog box is going to look a little bit different than CS5. Alright, so to print, if uh, you've never printed before from Photoshop, go to File, Print, pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, in CS6, your print dialog box is going to look a little different than mine. Uh, in the preview here, you can make your image larger or smaller. Okay. Um, you can uh, scale to fit media. You can set it at uh, 201BW, okay? And uh, you can basically change the orientation here as well if you want. Um, that's about all you're going to mess with when you print something. Please make sure you check mark the scaled fit media box so that it fits uh, full page in your image here. Otherwise, if you uncheck that, you have to manually kind of resize it whatever size you want it to be. Um, that just ensures that it's the size of your paper and make sure you print to 201 BW if you're going to print it. I'm not going to print right now so I'm just going to click done. Okay, so assuming you've got your um, posterized image ready for your Warhol tracing uh, project, um, uh, we got to switch over to Illustrator now. So open up Illustrator and then in Illustrator you can uh, create a new file and uh, this time, instead of just using a typical 8.5 by 11 size artboard, you can make a larger artboard uh, to fit all your tracings. So name your project with your last name or some part of your name and then call it Warhol Tracing or whatever. Um, and then down here in the width and height section uh, for the artboard, uh, you, can, you can make it any size you want. I'm just going to make mine a little bit larger. So I'm going to make it 12 by 12 inches, large square here, okay, and I'm going to click OK. And what you should see is a square artboard if you make square artboard. Uh, if you don't do that, I'll show you how to use the artboard tool. Uh, the artboard tool is over here. But first, let's place our image. So for the Warhol tracing uh, project, you're going to place your image in your file here, and you're going to trace it. Um, you're going to trace it nine times using about seven different techniques or so. Uh, I'm going to place my image onto a new layer, so I'm going to go to my layers, create a new layer, okay, and put that beneath my work layer, and then I'm going to go file, place to place my image. Uh, find your file. Should be in a folder with. Um, your image files and uh, this will be your project folder so make sure you save your illustrator file where you have your image file saved. Uh, select your image file that should be posterized and then click place. Okay, so mine's not too big. I can make it a little bit bigger if I want. And uh, you can set up grid guides if you want to make everything uniform. I'm just going to copy mine a couple times here. I know I need to trace it nine times, so I'm going to copy it uh, three by three. Okay. Uh, to copy your image, just hold down the Alt key and the Shift key if you want it to be lined up with the last image. Okay. So again, hold down the Alt key, click and drag, hold down the Shift key so that it stays in line. And then when you want to copy your rows, you can select three images, hold down the Alt key click and drag and then hold down the shift key to keep those in line. Uh, to copy something again, you just hit control D and you'll copy your last row. Okay. So again, we're tracing this image nine times. Uh, so whatever you picked, hopefully you're used to it. <laughs> uh, and once you've got your um, three by three row set up, you can um, make your image a little bit less uh, intense. So I'm going to select that entire layer and I'm going to turn down the transparency. Uh, in the transparency panel. If you don't see the transparency panel, go to window, check mark transparency. Okay. Uh, all of your windows and panels should be in here. Transparency is toward the bottom. They're organized alphabetically. Uh, for your opacity for these objects, I'm, I'm probably going to set it at about oh, 50, 60 percent here so I can see it, but it's not as dark as my drawing. Um, the opacity uh, is also up top here. 
so if you ever lose track of that panel you can just go to the, the options bar at the top okay now that we've got the opacity turned on I'm gonna lock this layer and this will be just a reference layer so I'm gonna check mark the little lock box here so that I can't edit anything on this layer or move anything on this layer okay so if you're ready to trace and you got your image layer uh, set up and, and locked and a little bit less uh, opaque um, you're gonna go to your work layer which should be a new layer on top of uh, your image layer here and then you're gonna trace each of these nine images using a different technique there's seven total different kinds of techniques the last two are kind of choice uh, or you can copy parts from your other ones and recombine them in different ways uh, if you forget what the image tracings are and I forget there's quite a few of them go to the PowerPoint in the project folder um, and if you remember your where your assignment is and add moto open that just check the objectives scroll down the last slide of the PowerPoint has all the different kinds of tracings you're supposed to use uh, this first one you're just going to use the pencil tool okay so I'm going to walk you through each of these um, and just sort of show you what you need to do for each of your tracings okay so for the first image you're going to trace it with the pencil tool um, so I'm going to zoom in uh, on that first image there and I'm going to switch to my pencil tool looks like a pencil in the toolbox and uh, you're just going to trace each uh, like uh, area okay with to the best of your abilities uh, they don't have to be perfect um, with the pencil tool you just click and drag to trace okay a couple of tips with that I believe if you hold down yep the alt key uh, and let go it will create a close shape for you which will make it easier to color that image um, you'll want to uh, hold down the control after you draw something and click off of it to deselect it um, sometimes the default setting for the pencil tool is to keep your path selected if you don't close it and uh, you can double click on the pencil tool to change its options so I'm just going to keep tracing here trace each individual uh, level or uh, value with a closed shape if you can uh, again you don't have to get super detailed if you don't want to but you want to get close you're trying to trace this image and you're trying to get used to tracing images or creating artworks um, so just sort of have fun making it look kind of wobbly and warbly looking pencil tool is not the greatest tool for creating paths but you know it has its own style okay um, again I'm not going to walk you through and trace the entire thing here you have complete creative freedom as to how you kind of accomplish that with the pencil tool make sure you trace all the details to a point where you can sort of recognize your subject and then if you want before you go to the next one you can color it otherwise you can color everything at the end and I'll show you how to do that at the end okay the next one we're gonna do just to check here is uh, the line tool only so you're gonna go to your next portrait and you're gonna switch to your line tool okay the line tool really not a great way to uh, trace your image but it gives it kind of this stylistically uh, unique look um, if you click and hold on the line tool you'll have tons of options I wouldn't use uh, anything but the straight line segment tool and the arc tool don't use the spiral or the grid tool um, and just sort of like click and drag to create some lines that overlap uh, you'll probably have to color this using uh, live paint when you're all done so make sure all your lines overlap and just have fun making it look kind of stylistically uh, kind of bizarre here okay just have fun uh, it doesn't have to look super precise try to get as much detail as you can if you want you can uh, change the width of certain lines you can overlap them kind of however you want you can be loose you can be kind of tight doesn't really matter to me um, just kind of have fun with the line tool and just trace each uh, value in your picture okay so the next thing you're gonna use is you're gonna use the pen tool with straight lines only okay so for this uh, third image here whoa I don't know why I X'd out of that for this third image here you're just gonna switch to your pen tool and click once each time to create only straight lines you're not gonna click and drag okay so switch to your pen tool okay and then when you trace something um, just click once each time try not to click and drag okay and with this you can actually get pretty detailed um, 
I can be pretty precise here. Depending on how many times I click each time, I can make my objects look almost round if I click enough times, okay? Uh, if you want to start a new line or a new shape, hold down control to click off of the one you just made, and you can start drawing a new shape if you want. Again, I don't really care how detailed or abstract you get here, but you want to have enough detail to the point where you can recognize an object or a part of your uh, image, okay? Try to close your shapes if you can. That makes it easier to color them. Um, if you want to start a new shape over or continue from a line you left off, hold down control to select that point, and then just hover your pen tool over one of the endpoints to start uh, drawing from that line again. Okay. You probably don't need to edit these when you're done, but if you want to, you can switch to a direct select tool and move around anchor points if you don't quite like how your tracing went. But uh, do that last. Don't do that as you go. Just sort of get a loose tracing down first, and then you can come back and edit it if you want. Okay. The next thing you're going to use is you're going to use your pen tool with curvy lines, and uh, I want you to stay just with curve curved lines. Okay, so you're going to go down to the next row and then you're going to use the pen tool um, and you're going to click and drag each time. Uh, this can get kind of frustrating because sometimes you don't really need a curve, but uh, try to just sort of get used to um, using curved lines. Okay, get a real feel for how curves fit uh, the contours of shapes. You can use, if you want, the shift key to constrain your handles to uh, vertical or horizontal axes or 45 degrees, um, but just sort of get used to tracing with curves, okay? Again, the space bar will toggle to your hand tool so you can move around. You probably want to zoom in for this so that you can get real accurate. Um, and just sort of have fun learning how to trace with curves only. Again. Um, you can adjust your lines when you're done with the pen tool. You can hold down the Alt key uh, to um, re-pull a handle into a new curve. Okay. Don't break any of your handles. That will be the next uh, assignment. And then you can use your direct select tool, of course, to uh, take your points and move those around. Okay. But only do that when you're done. Don't do that as you go. Okay. For um, the next one, you're going to use uh, the pen tool with all the different kinds of lines that the pen tool makes. Uh, so straight lines, curved lines, uh, broken handle points, corner points, all that. Um, so uh, I would uh, zoom in and then uh, switch to your pen tool. And now you have the freedom to like trace this as accurately as possible. This will probably be the best looking one out of all of them. And it probably should be the best looking one out of all of them. Uh, click and drag to create curves. Again, you can option click on a point to pull out a handle in a different direction. So like for the eye here, I option clicked at that corner to pull down a handle so I made a curve for my pupil. I'll click and drag up to create the rest of that curve. If you're not very good at uh, drawing initially uh, certain shapes real well with option, alt, clicks, all that, uh, just go back and edit those when you're all done. Again, you have complete freedom here. You can use all the different faculties of the pen tool. Um, you can break your handles, you can use straight lines when you need them, you can use curved lines wherever you need them. So, you know, really get this accurate and, and don't feel afraid to go back and edit lines once you're done. Uh, to edit lines with the pen tool, of course if you hover over an active path you can add an anchor point. If you hover over an anchor point you can subtract that anchor point. Uh, if you hold down control, that'll toggle to your last selection tool, which should be the direct select tool. Uh, and the direct select tool will allow you to pull handles, uh, move anchor points, okay? Um, with the pen tool, uh, you can hold down the alt key to re-pull handles, okay? And to break handles. If you hold down the alt key and use your convert anchor point to break a handle, you can make a corner point. Uh, for some people, this is how they make corners. They just sort of loosely trace things first and then they sort of go back and they break the handles to make them uh, corner points. You can do that at the end if you get kind of a loose tracing first. Again, I'm also expecting this one to be kind of your most accurate tracing. Try to get as many of these shapes as accurately as possible. The other methods don't really allow for accuracy the way the pen tool does.
Okay, so the next one you're just going to use the shape tools. Um, this one's going to look really, really, really weird. Um, don't worry if it doesn't look quite like you. Just sort of have fun playing around with the shape tools and getting it to loosely look like you. I want you to think creatively for some of these, and this is by far the most creative, loose uh, one of them all. So uh, just sort of, again, relax. It's okay if it doesn't look 100% like you. Try to get it as close as you can, but just use the shape tools. Um, just sort of overlap them wildly and, and use whatever shapes you want uh, in whatever way you want. Okay, the shape tools are over here under the rectangle tool. If you click and hold and then release on the tear off portion, which is on the far right hand side of this menu here, you'll create a tear off so that you can easily access each tool. Um, so, like if I want to start drawing with just shapes here, I could use, you know, some ovals and ellipses to create my eye here or my glasses, right? And, uh, you know, obviously switch to your selection tool to reshape your uh, um, your shapes. Uh, be real loose with these. Like, uh, maybe you create, you know, a rectangle and then you go back to your selection tool and rotate it just a little bit to create kind of a line shape. Um, just playfully overlap your shapes. It doesn't really matter if you get super, super accurate with this uh, particular method. Just, just kind of have fun with it. And, uh, let loose, you know. Sometimes you don't have to accurately represent things, and this is this is a kind of a method you could use to do that. Okay. Okay, for your uh, bottom row, lower left-hand side, you're going to use uh, your shape tools with the uh, Pathfinder panel or the Shape Builder tool. I don't really care if you use the Shape Builder or the Pathfinder exclusively, uh, but what I want you to do is create complex compound shapes um, or, you know, uh, more sophisticated shapes using Pathfinder um, to represent yourself. So, um, to do that, first you're going to have to make some shapes, and you're going to have to have, I, again, I recommend you tear off uh, the shape tool panel here, okay? And uh, I recommend you have your Pathfinder panel open and tear it off. So, to open up Pathfinder, again, if you don't have it open, go to Window, Pathfinder, um, and then to tear it off, just sort of click and drag it out. Uh, so let's zoom in here. If I want to make a shape for, say, my glasses here, I could take a couple of ellipses, okay, and kind of overlap them to match the curves here. Okay, not quite perfect, but you know, getting close here. I'm not going to sit here and rearrange these so that they are perfect, but just let's imagine if we got that pretty close. Okay, one tool you can use is the Shape Builder tool. Uh, shape Builder tool I don't use too often. It's right over here, uh, the hotkey for it is Shift M. And essentially what you do is you click and drag over to another shape that is also selected. So make sure you select your shapes. And then to show you here, it, it kind of takes areas of shapes and it combines them together for you automatically. So if I click and drag from this area over to this one, it will combine those shapes into one shape. If I keep doing that, you know, eventually I will have this big, complex, weird looking shape here. Okay? That will kind of look like my glasses shape. Now, it's not perfect, obviously, but kind of a cool tool to use to combine shapes. Again, another method, uh, if you don't want to use the Shape Builder tool, you can use the, uh, the Pathfinder commands. So, like if I uh, take and combine a square here with a, with a circle. And then a pentagon shape here, hexagon shape here. Okay. I can uh, kind of make my eye shape. All right. If I select all these shapes and then go to sh the shape mode and use uh, the unite command, those will combine all into one shape. Okay. So just use the random pathfinder commands here to create some, some weird fancy shapes to represent yourself. Again, this one can be really, really abstract. It doesn't have to look super accurate, but uh, play around with what you can create with these two tools, the Pathfinder uh, panel and the Shape Builder tool. Have fun kind of making some weird shapes or a bunch of tiny, awkward-looking shapes. It doesn't have to be super tight and controlled. Um, for the last two, you can sort of randomly do whatever you want. And in fact, for these last two, I don't care if you take and copy parts of 
your previous tracings uh, to these ones down here and sort of see what you get. So to show you how that would look, um, I would have to have all these traced. Obviously I don't, but what you could do is you could just go to portions of your tracing, uh, make a selection, hold down the Alt key, and copy those objects to your other image. Okay, So like if I wanted to use this accurately traced eye here, I could Alt click that down to my eye there and combine that with my more abstract representations to kind of create something that's a little bit more hybrid, a little bit uh, weirder, uh, while still looking sort of familiar. Okay, and then I don't I don't necessarily care what you wind up with in these last two. Have a lot of fun combining and cross combining uh, your representations. Maybe you do it like uh, straight lines at top and curvy lines at bottom, uh, or you know a combination of straight and curvy lines and just use two. Uh, tracings. Doesn't really matter. Um, I'm looking for some really creative um, tracings in these bottom two here. Okay, let's assume you have all your tracings traced and ready to go and you're ready to add some color. Okay, You do have to color these. How you color them, totally up to you. I'm going to show you kind of a boring way to color them and then you can kind of do what you will with it. Um, First things first, uh, I don't have a lot of these traced. I just sort of loosely traced this part of the eye to kind of show you uh, one method that you could use. And then there's obviously, you could color things that are closed shapes um, like you normally would. Uh, so here we've got our cluster of lines. Okay, I'm gonna select this cluster of lines and I'm gonna use the live paint uh, tool here. So click and drag on the shape builder tool, release over the live paint bucket, okay. And then in your swatches panel, you can actually pull out your swatches panel here because you'll be using it a lot. You'll have a, a couple of default colors, and then you'll have these settings, these uh, color, sorry, these color groups down here, and these are really handy. So if I want to paint using this color group, I can do that. So obviously my light value is right here, so I'm going to click in my selected group to make this a live paint object and paint pure white in there, and then I can use my uh, arrow key to go to the left here and paint with a slightly darker gray and just click. Um, another method I could use to color is to hold down the alt key with the paint bucket tool to sample a gray. So if I hold down alt and click right there I will sample that exact gray and paint with it. Okay. Uh, because my transparency is turned down, these will be a little bit lighter than normal. You can turn it back up if you want to sample the true colors, or you can just use your uh, your uh, swatches here to create true blacks. Okay, so just click inside closed off sections to create a uh, you know a, a black shape or you know whatever color you have. If you don't have enough tracing, uh, enough parts trace, like let's say I want the glasses rim to show here, I would have to add shapes to my live paint selection. So go back to whatever method you are using to trace that particular section. So I know I'm using just the line segment tool for this section. So I'm going to go back to my line segment tool. Uh, just draw whatever you need to add to your group. Okay. And then select your newly made object and your live paint group. And there will be an option up here called uh, merge live paint. And you're just going to mer merge that object with your live paint. So now when you go back to your live paint bucket tool, those will be uh, separate sections. So I can paint this kind of a, a medium or dark gray, and then I can paint uh, that a black color. And of course the stroke will be uh, whatever stroke you made it when you added it to the live paint group. I didn't give this line a stroke so it doesn't have one. Okay, And then you can just keep coloring. Um, of course, another option available to you is to create closed shapes and then apply a fill to those closed shapes. So for this shape, this shape's closed. Um, it has a black stroke and no fill. So I could fill that with, you know, a light gray there. Okay, and I could get rid of the stroke outline. Okay, so now I have a white object. Uh, that's another method for uh, drawing or coloring your object. Of course, for that, you have to make sure that you create a closed object every time. And sometimes that can be hard depending on how uh, nice and neat you are when you trace. So live paint kind of saves your, saves your butt because uh, you don't have to make closed shapes. You can just sort of overlap lines and then use the live paint bucket tool to fill those lines in to make fills. 
So that's kind of why I prefer it sometimes when I'm being lazy. Uh, another method you can color your images with is uh, using just colors for your values. So you would assign a certain color to a certain value. Okay, so I'm painting with my live paint bucket tool. There is a group in the swatches palette down here, color group. Uh, I could make yellow uh, my lightest value, okay, and paint my light values yellow, and then paint my medium values orange, okay, and then my 50-50 uh, grays red, okay, and my, my, my dark blacks uh, purple, and my dark grays blue. Okay. So this is one way you could color uh, your portrait if you wanted to. Uh, I don't necessarily care if you do it this way, so long as you keep it consistent. So if you're going to make uh, your dark gray values, um, you know, dark blue or, or purple, keep them that way for the entire drawing. Don't uh, switch it up, otherwise it'll make no sense and you kind of have a really funky looking image on your hands. Um, if you keep it consistent, you kind of it, it does look kind of cool, and it looks more like um, an Andy Warhol artwork uh, because he kind of kept his colors consistent to each value range. So uh, you can do that if you want to have fun with it and sort of color it your own way. Um, once you've got it all colored, uh, you don't have to label much of anything. Just make sure you have your name on your file and uh, hand it in, and uh, try to color everything. If you get kind of sick of it and you don't quite get to the background, that's okay. But try to color each face and trace each face. This project is meant to give you a lot of practice with these tools. And uh, it's, it's meant to get you sort of thinking creatively about how you can represent certain things using vectors. Uh, so have fun with it and try to, try to kind of experiment as you're uh, being more precise or be more precise as you experiment. Just sort of use this as a playground.